Okay, so we're going to talk about El Salvador and Portland, and we're going to start with El Salvador. Okay, we're going to break this down, and our focus is first on Thomas Hobbes and what he would say about El Salvador. So first, I want to say, what would he have to say about Bukele's manner of ruling? Okay, and then also specifically his anti-crime policies. Not anti-crime policies, on anti-crime policies. Okay, in terms of his manner of ruling, what I mostly wanted you guys to focus on in the video are two things. Um, the more obvious one is him extending his time in office, maybe against the rules, extending his time in office. And the other is also extending the state of emergency in El Salvador so that he can continue to arrest tens of thousands of people and just keep them in prison indefinitely. So what would Hobbes say about staying in power too long and using states of emergency constantly to give yourself lots of power. What would he say about that? Okay. So, and let's be clear what we mean by he, Hobbes, would agree with extended time and power. So, I mean, Edison, you summed it up as cool. And that would, I mean, if Hobbes would have used a word like cool to describe this, he probably would have. Okay, this is very much his kind of thing. So remember, rulers are supposed to be Leviathan. And you can't be a terrifying awe-inspiring creature if you don't have power and you're not going to stick around. All right. What about those anti-crime policies? Locking up tens of thousands of people, stopping people on the streets at random searching cars all the time. What would he say? What would Hobbes say about that? Yeah, he would agree. So, I mean, and we'll get more into the details there. Um, what is the primary responsibility of government? Yeah. And it does, does it seem like Bukele's policies have been successful? Yeah. I mean, that's the, and again, so I, I know some students first hour are really uncomfortable trying to channel Hobbes through their own statements. Um, none of this is what you guys are saying on these issues. This is all about what we think Hobbes would say about them. So he would see Bukele is succeeding. All right, which takes us very directly to the next point. How would Hobbes judge Bukele's protection of the status of Salvadoran people's rights? Okay, right. So, I mean, he would see that the state of their rights
Um, I guess, Edison, would you say just, proper? You can use either. You can use both. Because as you said, <coughs> and this is where, I mean, another place, just because I, Edison, I get where you're coming from. I would, this was another place where I'd use slashes. We use lots of slashes today. Freedoms and rights, kind of think about those as the same thing. Maybe we, it's possible we need to have the positive versus negative rights discussion that my law and citizen students have. That we'll probably do that at some point. And he would say, I mean, they're getting a good trade. I mean, sure, from Hobbes' perspective, he's locking up some of the wrong people, but he is erring on the side of safety, and that seems to be achieved. And to my it's, to my knowledge so far, those public opinion polls that you see out of El Salvador are not manipulated. The guy is wildly popular. His 80 plus percent approval ratings, uh, American politicians wish they could get those kind of ratings. The last time we saw anything like that in the U.S. was George W. Bush right after 9-11. And it didn't last very long. You guys have never seen it in your lifetime and probably won't. I mean, Congress is a body. Its approval rating is in the single digits, and it's stuck there. Isn't it like the military is at like 75 or something? Yes. Which, which I never worried about before. And I actually I still don't worry that the military is going to do anything, but I wonder some more now what that says about like Americans' potential tolerance for authoritarian rule. Um, I'm just not sure. Yeah, I really thought that my classes were going to get more, more and more boring coming out of the 90s and as the war on terror kind of settled out. Nope, seems that we are set for interesting times. Okay, uh, here, and by the way, the, it is a Chinese curse to wish someone a life in interesting times. Okay, so what should the Salvadoran people do about Bukele's rule, especially staying in office perhaps for as long as he wants? What should they do about that? Okay, and I'll give you a hint because in the, at last hour I got a really good answer from a student, but they gave me the long answer first and the, the short answer at the end. Let's start with the short answer. What should they do about it? One word. You have to say one word about what the people should do about Bukele staying in office too long? Nothing. Nothing. Right. Well, what did you say, Lily? Sorry. Said protest. Pro no, nothing. Nothing. Right? <laughs> Remember, you're thinking about this as Lily, an American citizen, who, in response to a president, is just like, yeah, I'm not leaving. You're like, yes, you need to leave, and we are going to go out in the streets and tell you that you need to leave. Yeah. No, this is Hobbes. So Lily needs to be Lily Hobbes, great 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 granddaughter of thomas hobbs okay and so nothing and i mean you can see nothing for two reasons now for hobbs the only reason is once the people have created a leviathan and i if you guys don't like the leviathan it to me it it sums up and it's a one word that's distinct from any other word you're going to use in this class. So once you remember what Leviathan means, like you've got it. Plus, if Hobbes is trying to sell it, really trying to sell it, Bukele seems to be a successful Leviathan. And again, none of this is your opinion. If, Lily, you run for Congress when you hit 25, I'm not going to be like, ha-ha, I've got this old Google Doc that says Lily loves dictatorship and hates people's rights. Uh, lock them up. Lock them all up. 
No, I'm not going to do that to you, Lily. Not even for fun. All right, and now, in the words of Monty Python, for something completely different, Portland, Oregon. All right. And John Locke will be our focus at first. Right. So what would he say in terms of his social contract theory about government decriminalizing drug possession by drug users? That before anybody actually answers, we can't talk about this in terms of just one group. Who are the two groups we need to talk about? In Portland. The drug users drug so the drug users, and you're bowing out of that one, Lily. It's, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so drug users and non-users of drugs, which I know I could, you, you're thinking, why don't you just say non-drug users? Um, I don't, I, ask an ELA teacher. I think that that would be considered weird uh, to do because it suggests that they could be using something else but not drugs or non, see, this is what I get when I'm talking one thing and typing at the same time. Hey, getting old is no fun. Okay, so in terms of the drug users, if we could bring John Locke's corpse in here and reanimate it to talk to us for a while, um, what do you think he would say about the government's treatment of the rights of drug users? Is the government doing a good job? So on one hand, on one hand, you would say that people have the right to property, right? Uh, so they have the ability to carry drugs around them no matter what, and the government should have the right to but on the other hand, uh, people lose the government's authority to provide the consent of the governor, which means that the government has a right to uphold the common good, and therefore, if the rate that use of drugs is making society worse off, then you know maybe you, like on those grounds, he would say that the government should, like, but maybe not make it. Maybe. Okay. Well, so in the second half of what you're saying, I mean, definitely. If, if John Locke is trying to balance out everything, I, I think those are the kind of issues he would have to raise. If we're thinking just about the drug users, though, we probably need to focus on the first half of what Edison said. So, which actually, we, we can talk about it that way. So, uh, property rights are respected. Because they can carry drugs. Or just they can have their, have drugs. What about in terms of their life? Property are respected. Property rights are respected. It's a good thing that I can type this. I had a professor back in the days of paper and document cameras who would draw little parachutes dropping words into sentences where he forgot to put them in the first place. Um, we had to make different fun back then. Um, okay, what about their lives? Do you have a right to your own life and to your own body? I'm not starting this a discussion about vaccination, so we're just not we're not going there right now. We're just, just talking about drugs. Um, do you think Locke would say people have a right to put drugs in their body if they want to? Yes. Yeah. Bless you. And I guess, I mean, we can add into there, I mean, liberty too. Right. What about our non users, though? What about their property? Are their property rights being respected in the current situation? Yeah. It's just like, there's more crime. Yeah. So, and there's different ty types of crimes. Like, Kelsey, what? why was Walmart leaving Portland? You weren't doing anything wrong. I'm just picking students at rank. I've, I've learned I need to do that. 
what were they, what were they doing? I mean, well, what's been a big problem in the United States generally in the last few years for stores like Walmart and Target? Yeah, shoplifting, theft, right? So property-wise, we've got theft. What was what happened to the poor post office? Yeah, so I mean, all the windows were busted out. So we got vandalism and theft. And if you're trying to sell a business or a house in one of these neighborhoods, are you going to be able to sell your property if you want to? No. And if you can, you're going to find out that property values are low. So all of those things affect your property rights. In terms of life, why was that one legislator talking about kids on playgrounds? What did that have to do with anything? How? Were they like... Well, so, I mean, it could be, it could be a bad influence on kids. That's, that's come up... Actually, that's come up every hour. So, yeah, Blake, you're right on track with that. Uh, What else? Like, if you were a parent, what do you kid want your kid not to like accidentally like hit their toe on when they're playing? Yeah. So, all right. I mean, you don't want your kid to accidentally get in contact with fentanyl uh, or a needle. Was walking in a city. No, it's, uh, I mean, it's scary because, it, I mean, there are lots of places in St. Joe where there are just needles around. Okay. And then finally, for the sake of time, for life, um, so you have fewer stores and higher prices to shop. And that's, I mean, that is a big deal. Losing a Walmart, some people would be like, yeah, big loss. But if you are a low-income person and low-income people spend a greater share of what they make on necessities than high-income people, even a little loss in good opportunities to find cheaper things hurts. All right, I did get this last bit recorded in fourth hour. Um, do you guys want to do it at the beginning of seminar or do you want me to just we'll just wrap it up at seminar okay we'll do that all right thank you i appreciate you guys sacrificing some of that time for us all right guys let's let's get back to that google doc and wrap up our notes uh, oh geez no 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 it's not it's not you it's me Um, now, we left off with Part B under lock. And for this, right, the focus should be, like, how well is Portland balancing the rights of everybody? So this is where Edison's initial comment can come back in. Um, although I would prefer somebody other than Edison give it just to give Edison a break. He had a good thought once he explained it well, so we should let somebody else do it. What would Locke say? Is Portland balancing the rights of drug users and non-drug users well? Whose rights seem to be getting prioritized? Okay. And again, we can't prop him up and bring him back to life, but it seems to me likely... Jeez. 
if you want to ever have problems typing, just type while somebody can see it. Okay. Okay, don't, if you're still typing, don't worry. I'm just going to bring up the next point so that you guys have time to type while we start looking at the next. Okay, because now we've brought Hobbes back in. What do you think Hobbes would say about the situation in Portland? Would he approve of the way things are? Okay, so he would not approve of Portland's government. And I'm not even really feeling the need to hedge with likely as we did with Locke up there. I think it's pretty clear Hobbes would not like seeing the disorder in Portland. So just to give the reason for that. What's wrong? Uh, short people problems. I know how you feel, Lily. I know how you feel. I'm not saying you're short. I said you're, but you are shorter than Christian. Lily, just just if it makes you any feel be feel any better, my kids love looking at the CDC growth curve because they're in like the 75th percentile or above, and then they love asking me to remind them what percentile I'm in. And I'm like, I'm in the 25th percentile, kids. So, yeah. okay, okay. Well, that's that's true. That's true too. There's a there's a difference there. Yes, Kate. Uh, yes. <laughs> Right. And of course, I'm recording all of this discussion about how I'm in the bottom 20th percent, 25th percentile for height to be posted later for other classes to benefit. So, Lily, you got your revenge on me. And it's clear, like, I have assigned all of the power of revenge to you, immortalized in video. So, this is going really well for me. All right. What would he do to make it better? What would he recommend? Okay. Okay, so even at the expense of who or of whom? I was fear there's an English teacher in waiting, hanging out in my classrooms. Of at whose expense? Yeah. I mean, he's, let's face it, I mean, given what we know about Hobbes, he's not even worried about their rights at all. I mean, if they're a source of disorder, make them stop. Okay, now with that, um, let's see, I'm going to stop this recording.